Hi, good morning everyone. So today I want to talk about immunity. Today I want to talk about cancer. Today I want to talk about little things that we can do every single day that slowly accumulate and add up to something that can prevent us from the onset of disease. Because as you can see, things are getting worse and worse every single day. We have more cancer, we have more disease, we have fantastic tests and machinery that's become so good at detecting and telling us what problem we have. There are little cameras that can get into your system and tell you I have a lesion over there or a fibroid over here or a cyst over here. And we've just become so great at telling people what's wrong with you, what's wrong with all of us. And then we have parameters to control and measure. That's all good because whatever we do has to be measured. It has to be measurable you know, against some amount of data. But the problem is we're getting good at all of these things and we're not getting good at preventing disease. We're not getting good at curing. We're not getting good at healing. And that's the spectrum that needs to change. So from today onwards for the next 10 days, I mean, all of us know yesterday we lost Mr. Vinod Khanna to cancer again. And this has to stop. It's not just him. There are celebrities and there are so many people who we don't even know about in villages and towns and cities that constantly die of cancer every single day. And we're just getting better at setting up more hospitals and having more doctors and treatments and all of these things. What we need to be investing in every single day is prevention. If you can do anything and everything that it takes to prevent the onset of disease, you are blessed, you are rich, you are wealthy. Because once you start getting sick, it's not that you cannot heal, it's not that you cannot cure, but then there's this vicious circle that's, you know, it's a fear-induced industry. There's always someone to sell you a new treatment or there's all of these things that happen all the time for you to get better because it's fear-induced and you're so confused. And with confusion comes fear and with fear, there is no place for healing. So I really want to invest time and encourage people over the next 10 days or every single video that I do going forward to invest in prevention because that is within your control. Once disease strikes you, a lot of it is not in your control. A lot of it is, but then we have emotions, we have willpower, we have financial issues that we have to look at and all of that you know, just adds to the burden of sickness. And we all know the power of the mind when it comes to healing. So today, let's talk about prevention. I'm not just going to talk about conventional things. We're going to talk about, you know, little things. And today, I'm here to tell all the women and men out there that we need to be mindful about the tight underwear that we wear and bras. I'm not here to tell you to stop wearing bras or stop wearing tight underwears. I'm here to tell you that let's be mindful about it. You know, whenever we can be without underwear or be without bras, we should choose to do that. And that's when you sleep at night or sometimes when you're home in the privacy of your own family, you could just be wearing boxers or you could just be braless. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why. Because currently, there is absolutely nothing medically, physiologically or anatomically that shows any goodness of wearing a bra throughout the day. Now, yes, in society, we require to wear a bra. Okay, when we lift heavy weights, when we do strenuous exercises, men require to wear a tighter underwear to support their testicles and women to support their breasts. But we need to understand two things today. I've spoken about your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is your body's garbage disposal system. Most lymphomas, most cancers are caused because of the accumulation of toxins over time. Now, when a woman wears a bra, and I need every woman to understand this, when you wear a bra, okay, a bra decreases circulation in your breasts. And because you have decreased circulation many, many times, many cysts and many fibroids and a lot of breast pain is caused by wearing a bra or wearing the wrong kind of bra or wearing a bra for too long during the day. And all of this decreases circulation. The second most important thing is every woman needs to understand that you have lymph nodes under your arms, in your armpit area, and also in the inside of your breast that travels along your breastbone. So you need to understand that these lymph nodes are like little drains. Why do you sweat? Why does sweat come out from under your armpits? Because that's where your lymph nodes are. And when your toxins accumulate and your lymph nodes expand, okay, it releases a lot of toxins in the way of sweat. So when we use all of these deodorants or these perfumes or these sticks that's, uh, that promise to stop sweat, and I know now, I know cosmetically, yes, walking around with a t-shirt with sweat marks under your armpits may not be the best thing for your job or for you as a woman or a man. 
but there are healthier choices out there. You can get deodorants, you can get sprays and perfumes which have no chemicals, which are paraben free, which are fragrance free, which are all salt based or aloe vera based or essential oil based, which do not stop you from sweating. You have to sweat. That is your body's natural defense mechanism to pass out so many toxins and heavy metals from the human body. So you need to understand most lymphomas and most breast cancers or most cancers which inf involve toxic lymph nodes is nothing but the accumulation of toxins. So we need to allow your arms to sweat. So number one, change. Change all these chemically laden cosmetics that you use to something which is more organic or more chemical free. That will really make a difference to you. Now, coming back to lymph nodes. So you know, you know how your bra works for you. You ha either have that underwire or it gets tight across this entire circumference, which means it is pressing against your lymph nodes, which means you are compromising the drainage system of your body, which is designed to protect you. And every case of cancer that we see which involves infected lymph nodes or lymphomas, all you really, really have to do if it's caught at an early stage is detoxify, improve your lymphatic system, enable your own body's immunity to take over. And yes, there are many cases where you have to do chemo, radiation, and surgery, but I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about what you have in control. I'm talking about prevention. I'm talking about prevention. So underwire bras are the worst bras, yes. Now, I understand that it may support women who have larger breasts, but we also need to understand that there are options in the market today which are more cotton and they don't have underwire, they have more elastic. So the best test for you to see is when you remove your bra today, if you have indents in your skin, across your back, under your breasts, under your arms, you know that your bra is too tight for you and throughout the day, for however long you've been wearing your bra, you have been constricting your lymph nodes, you have been decreasing circulation. And now let me talk to you about a couple of studies. A lot of women out there believe that, oh, my breasts will sag if I don't wear a bra. But that is impossible. Let me tell you how gravity actually increases your breast tone and your muscle tone. Now, anatomically, when you look at the anatomy of the human body, the intelligence and the brilliance of the human body, above your breasts, your upper breasts, you have a muscle that constantly holds onto your breasts. Now, when you wear a bra, your bra is doing the job of that muscle to hold up your breasts in place. That muscle gets weaker and weaker and weaker over time, which is why a lot of women who remove their bras for extended periods of time suddenly start feeling this pain in their breasts. It is nothing but a sore muscle. It's like when you go to the gym first time after many, many days or your first time, your muscles get sore and as they get stronger and stronger, the soreness decreases. God or a higher power has blessed you with a natural muscle to support your breast. And your breast, in fact, will sag less without the use of a bra for extended, extended period of time. Because without your bra, that muscle actually gets to work itself out, which means it gets stronger and it will actually reduce sagging. There is no connection between a bra preventing the sagging of breasts. But yes, in, ex in, in exclusive cases where obesity and very, very large breasts come into play, it may support breast movement, especially a woman working out where there is movement of the breast and you want to hold it in place, you know, through jump methods or plyometrics or CrossFit or anything that involves the movement of your breast, you would require the support of a sports bra. But once your activity is done, get that bra off and let that circulation improve. Okay, even, it, even when it comes to all these push-up bras and all these cosmetic bras which make a woman look different, that's fine. I understand beauty, I understand, you know, it is important to a woman, that's fine. But what about the time that you don't need it? Can you make an effort to reduce the frequency of how long and how often you wear those kind of bras? So at night when you sleep, a lot of women out there think that if my, bra, if my, if my breasts are not supported when I sleep with a bra, they're going to sag, they're going to disfigure. No, let me tell you something else. Shoulder pain and neck pain is the most frequent complaints for women and they say, oh, I need to support my breasts because my breasts are heavy and that's causing my neck and shoulder pain. Let me tell you right now, your neck and shoulder pain has to be developed with neck exercises and shoulder exercises and you need to correct your lifestyle to reduce neck and shoulder pain. What's the first thing? Your posture. 
most most women out there have an improper posture when they sit when they work when they stand when they do things that is detrimental to your neck pain and your shoulder pain so you cannot blame it on your breasts alone so many women out there go for breast reduction surgery thinking that their neck pain and their shoulder pain will decrease initially it does but a few months later they come back and they say look we have the same pain and it was not about breast reduction it was about strengthening the right muscles which is your neck and your shoulders Today, everyone's looking at weight loss and flat bellies and all of that stuff, but no one is looking at developing the smaller muscles that support you, which is your neck and your shoulder. There are small multiple muscles that support you and will get rid of that pain if you train the right way. So, again, coming back to that, let me go over my points. Yes, it is also noted medically and through research that the elasticity and the collagen in your breast increases when your breasts are, you know, um, are allowed to be free. But when they're constantly constricted and supported by a bra, you decrease the amount of collagen and elasticity. So for younger women, okay, the elasticity and collagen, and even older women, there's this whole study where premenopausal and menopausal women were asked to reduce the frequency of their bra you know, throughout the day. And they actually reported less sagging, more firmness, and more elasticity and collagen. So... It is all connected back to nature. When you go back and look at the tribals, the way the tribals lived, the way people lived before evolution, there was no such thing as a bra. But like I said, I'm not here to tell you stop wearing your bra. I'm here to tell you, can you reduce it? If it's underwire bra, find a better alternative. If it exists in the market, I, you know, people watching this may be able to suggest because I don't have that kind of... Uh, you know, I don't know that brand which I can suggest to you right now. All I can say is it's out there because a lot of my breast cancer patients, I insist that they switch over to cotton bras and bras that don't have underwire. So please make that shift. And when you can be without a bra, be without a bra. Remember, sagging is not, it's not going to prevent, a bra is not going to prevent sagging. Good lifestyle, regular detoxification, looking after your weight, training your muscles the right way. The best exercise to prevent that is push-ups. Push-ups is the best exercise that tightens and works on your upper pectoral muscles, which is your upper breast muscles, and that will make it stronger to support your breast. You keep your circulation going the right way. Coming to men right now, tight underwears throughout the, out the day. You have lymph nodes in your groin area as well, and women do too. So when you have tight underwears throughout the time, you are decreasing circulation in your testicles. Now, I understand you may not want to you know, go out of the house without underwear and stuff like that. Maybe you can look at boxes or when you're home, just be in boxes or light cotton clothing, but you do not have to be in tight underwear all the time because that also restricts your circulation and you have lymph nodes over there. It's the same thing. You're detoxifying from your groin area every time you sweat out there. So these are minor changes, but believe me, cancer is such a multifactorial disease today. It's not just one thing. It's not just pesticides. It's not just obesity. It's not just genetics. It's not just cigarette smoking or carcinogens in the air. It is multifactorial from the fragrances that you have in your car and your toilet to your flow detergents to the way you wear your bra and your underwear. You know, I strongly suggest because there's a lot of research coming. If you can and you are able to, Sleep naked at night. Sleep without clothing. That's the only time your body actually gets time to breathe. Your skin gets time to breathe consistently. So if you can do it, that's our natural self. When you're born, when you come out of the womb, you come out without any clothes. So I'm not saying be naked throughout the day. I mean, when there are intervals in the day that you can, that is the most natural way to be, where you support your lymphatic system and you support all those billions of skin pores that you have all over to actually breed. So we're talking about immunity. We are always talking about immunity. The best investment that you can make every second, every minute, every day of your life is immunity because there is no doctor, there is no scientist, there is no nutritionist, there is no trainer, there is no healer that can heal you completely better than your own immunity, the intelligence and brilliance of the human body that every one of us are born with. So invest in your immunity. It is the only thing that can protect you completely. So if you're sick, invest in your immunity. If you're looking at prevention, invest in your immunity. So that's it for today. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.